lot to see, a lot to do. Hi, my name's Simone Brick. I'm from Australia and I run for Salomon. And we're through security, so it's just me now. Um, yeah, always feel weird this uh, before you get on the plane after saying goodbye to everyone. Last year, coming to Golden Trail by myself <laughs> from Australia, other side of the world, was everything new and everything hard. And it was incredibly scary getting on the plane, knowing that I would be alone for the next three months on the other side of the world on different time zones. And I really struggled because I have relied so heavily on my support system back in Australia. And there's a lot of comfort in being around people that know me and know how I work and also what I've been through. That was the way forward. That was always where I needed to be just because I couldn't stay stuck where I was. So, yeah, wouldn't change anything. Before travelling to Stranda Golden Trail this year, I had a few months to prepare and it, that itself I was really excited about because it's been a while since I've had a few solid months of just training. So I was putting together some of the biggest weeks with the most climb for a long time there and feeling so excited uh, about four weeks out um, and pinching myself at thinking it would all go really well to plan. But uh, lo and behold, <laughs> we live in a world where COVID exists. Um, so I think it was two weeks almost to the day before my flight and three weeks before the race that I got COVID and I got real sick. Oh, yes, yeah, one week till race day. I'm on the race course and every time I try and run uphill at all, I just can't. Oh, fuck. I'm not sure this will ever see the light of day, but... And I know, like, I'm, I am so self-assured in my support system. I know that no one's going to judge me on the result next week. I think it's just this is an athlete moment of, uh, in a way, mourning the fact that three weeks ago I felt so fit and so ready for this trip. And now it kind of feels like I'm here and I'm not ready. And uh, next week is not going to feel good, I am tr doing my absolute best to not buy into that thought and to take it day by day. And as I just spoke to coach on the phone and distract, distract myself and just get through the next week and the body is capable of amazing things. And I know that I could get to the start line feeling fine. I'm Bart Przedwojewski, I'm from Poland and I run for Salomon. My plan during pre-season was to train in the Canarian Island to be ready for Golden Trail World Series, but a few days after arriving there, I couldn't run properly. I got sick and I didn't know why, so I decided to back to Poland to get some medicals. I visited a lot of specialists, but no one was able to find what was it? I finally decided to ask Quartz program and they told me that probably I was overtrained. So only one way to recover for that was by stopping two months. It's so common when athletes turn pro that they suddenly become injured. They have all this free time and the temptation is to start training hard when actually you need to be using it to rest. Bart overtrained and because of that became injured and missed the first two races of the season that he was desperate to be at. To come Strandda, not only does he need to perform well, but he has to then race the rest of the series to make sure he has enough points to get to that final. Emotionally, I got really sad. Last year, I quit my job to have better training and be on the top. 
but now I was finding myself without running for two months. So, like, an hour and a half later, and uh, we've come pretty good, mentally at least. So, it's amazing the highs and lows, even just in one sort of run. I'm well past the highest point of the race course, and oh, the race course is insane. Like, it's, it's everything I love because it's so damn hard. Like, it is just kilometers on this sort of stuff, um, which I don't know if anyone really knows how to run on properly and not die. And I'm a lot more at peace right now with whatever happens, happens. And it's, it's funny to think that just, just down there next to that little lake, I can literally see the rock I was sitting on 90 minutes ago, crying my eyes out. And uh, now I'm up top and <laughs> life doesn't look so bad. Another new face this season is Manny Marias. You might not have seen him yet because we didn't actually film him at the start of Zagama because he started so slowly, but then came through the ranks and finished up in third position. Strand is actually more in suiting to his running style though, because he's another sky running world champion. And he's known for the speed of his descent. He's really good at technical, and Strande is almost the perfect course for him. Hola, soy Manuel Merillas Moledo. Vengo de una provincia pequeñita de España que se llama León. Bueno, este año la estrategia me ha estado funcionando bien, entre comillas. En Cegaba fue una estrategia bastante buena, tiré a lo seguro. Normalmente mi estrategia es tirar a, a morir y a ver qué pasa. Eh, sé que aguanto, aunque tiro a morir, pero en Cegama tiré a lo seguro, quizás no lo ideal para ese tipo de carreras. Podría haber hecho mejor tiempo, pero también podría haber hecho mucho peor. Pero la estrategia siempre se va en, de menos, o sea, intentar guardar una bala. Y vamos a decir, si son tres horas de carrera, hasta la hora y media, las dos, y la última hora hacerla a dolor. Y juego mucho con eso. Juego con los kilómetros y con el cansancio de la gente porque la gente últimamente anda muchísimo. Son unos máquinas y cada vez hay mucho más nivel. En mi vida, empezar a competir empezó mucho más tarde de cuando yo empecé a hacer montaña. Yo iba haciendo montaña desde que empecé a caminar, como quien dice, desde que me tenía de pie. Me cogían y me decían, venga, vete a por el ganado, vete a la vaca aquella que está a punto de parir. Después, Claro, ya tuve que marchar un poquitín de casa para estudiar, siendo muy pequeñito. Y después, eh, entre medias, empecé a jugar al fútbol. Y mi inicio a padecer atletismo fue para mejorar el fútbol. O sea, quería ser más rápido, quería ser más ágil. Y el atletismo viene muy bien. Pero sin darme cuenta, empecé a, a combinar eh, el atletismo con la montaña y hasta el día de hoy. Entre medias de empezar a correr por montaña, unos ocho años después, me lesioné. Fueron unos tres años. Eh, primer año, año y medio, hasta que me operé. Fue difícil porque era correr y estar lesionado o cojo durante semanas, eh, vivía con dolor. Eso mentalmente es una, una tortura, pero una tortura que no os imagináis. Es el, el humor, te cambia, te cambia la forma de ser, todo. Al año o a los ocho meses de la operación me fui a vivir a una caravana a pensar, a estudiar, a leer, a informarme de, de todo y a tener paciencia para poder haber llegado el día de hoy, que estamos a 2022, pues estar lo más fuerte posible después de haber pasado una lesión que tan solo el 30% de las personas que, lo, que la tienen se recupera. Mi vida ha cambiado desde hace dos meses y medio, más o menos. Eh, el nacimiento de un hijo siempre conlleva cambios. Y vamos a decir que el cambio no ha sido muy grande porque me ha salido muy tranquilo. Duerme muy bien por las noches. Eh, yo siempre dormía del tirón 8, 10, 12 horas. Lo que pasa es que ahora tengo que hacer 4, 3, 2 y 1 más o menos. Me va durmiendo en ese, en ese rango. Duermes de 2 o de 3 tirones. Pero durante el día eh, no tengo problema para entrenar porque muchas veces eh, eh, no tengo problema con mi pareja porque ella me ayuda muchísimo con esto. Sin ella no podría hacer esto, como sin duda. Lo que pasa es que ahora tengo que hacer fraccion, fraccionar los entrenos. Pero el cambio es importante para competir. Se, hace, se ha complicado todo más, pero soy muy feliz, <risa> mucho. O sea, los cambios de mi vida han sido siempre para mejor. The weather in Stranda was really wet underfoot, 
which is perfect condition for Manu, because that's how he trains at home. He's super skillful on the downhill and the technical. But last season, Bart was one of the best, if not the best in the series at exactly those conditions. So we're finally gonna find out who is the best between the two of them. A head to head we've been waiting for for a long time. Ready, Simona? Um, <laughs> what sort of question is that with this course? Ready as I will ever get. Oh, fuck, that's close. What time is it? 9.15. We have half an hour. This new season, there's always the desire, being an athlete, to perform better. Um, and this season, as opposed to last season, I do want to be at the final. After a long time without racing, I'm really happy to be here. A few days before the flight, my coach said to me, you ready. A Bar, pues no sabría cómo describiroslo porque personalmente casi no puedo hablar con él, no nos entendemos mucho, pero me parece un tío muy competitivo, muy centrado en lo que hace. Eh, haz compite muy poco, las concentra en las carreras importantes y vamos a decir que no tiene carreras de preparación como hago yo muchas veces, sino que tiene carreras objetivas. Creo que ha tenido sus cocinas eh, para principio de temporada, pero bueno, lo importante es que lo supera y que eso es un factor mental muy importante para poder llevarlo después a las carreras. To me, trying to break into the top 20 in these sorts of fields would be huge for me. Um, but knowing that as long as I'm to myself showing improvement, I, that's all I can do. All I can do is my best, and that's all I've ever expected of myself. So, yeah, I want to go all the way, always want to, but whether that happens or not, I'll have a crack. There will be bathrooms at the start line. Come on, get to the party day. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> Before running full stop, like, <laughs> life was interesting and a little horrible. Trail running itself, when I started trail running, I, I still view as a turning point. To me, I think I would count as the ultimate healer, in a way, or, or part of it, just because it challenged me in new ways. It taught me so many new things about myself and the community is like nothing else, both in Australia and internationally. I think I found a home and what I was missing at that point in time was a place where I could be myself, be celebrated for being myself. And I found that within trail running. Um, whereas in high school, I was like, I was very different to how I am now. I was quiet. I think I've had, I had depression from the time I was 14 and I really struggled. And I also had a lot of medical things probably that were undiagnosed. And I always had the mindset of an athlete my entire life. I've always wanted to compete. I think I always had the mindset, but I always had roadblocks put in my way. One of which was that I grew up overweight by quite a long way and I couldn't physically run very well or as well as I would have hoped. And I completely lost myself just because I didn't have anything to aim towards or anything to let out that competitive energy. And so, and by the time I was 18 and left the structure of school, um, I fell apart. I decided to try and get fit. I went about that in the scientific competitive way that my mind tends to and managed to lose way too much weight way too quickly um, and, and developed anorexia and was severely underweight within six to eight months of being severely overweight. And from there, honestly, the next three years between 18 and 21, like, it's a bit of a blur. Um, I think I spent almost more time in hospital than I did at home. Um, my life became, my identity became the sick girl. My identity became the one with mental health problems and the one with anorexia, with depression. 
with anxiety. I was diagnosed with, it felt like everything under the sun. And yeah, I don't, I, it's hard to think now of how it all happened because it really was one thing after another, after another, new diagnoses, trying new things, trying new treatments, new medications, and just none of it was working. I, I don't know where all this came from, but I do know that had it not been for other people and for reaching out for help and being vulnerable enough to say, I'm not okay um, and I'm really struggling here, like I, I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for other people. After the race start, I decided to push hard because I was feeling really good. So the first part of the climb, I, lead, I was leading, but the gap was really close. We arrived at the summit, Jonathan Albon, Davide Manini are losing together. From there, I knew the downhill is very technical, so I would have to take a risk if I want to be first at the finish line. Bueno, en Estranda... Yo me planteé allí, no tenía pensado ir desde un inicio, pero dije, le pregunté a Anders, eh, que es allí de, de Noruega, y me dijo, si quieres hacer una carrera de montaña en las Golden, esta es la, la más, la que más montaña va a tener. Si llueve encima va a estar divertidísimo. Y a medida que me iban contando, yo iba escuchando a los corredores que estaban allí para las Golden y todo el mundo estaba temblando por la pedrera. Y yo, ostris, pues si durase en vez de un kilómetro que hubiera sido 10 kilómetros de bajada así, yo, Porque claro, llegué arriba al pico a dos minutos de Jonathan, llegué al final de la pedrera esa a 50 segundos que lo tenía allí, pero se acabó lo difícil. You can see uh, John Alban. And guess who's in second now? Who took advantage of yeah. that descent? Manuel Merias. Actually, he's together with Bart, so he caught up with Bart, but couldn't quite pass him yet. The first part of the downhill um, after turning at the top of the rocks was first of all relief because their cardiovascular, like my cardio wise, it's not hard um, because it's so technical. So there I actually felt like myself again and I started moving a lot faster and girls that had just passed me on the uphill, I caught up a few of them really quickly. I tried to switch off my brain because I'd never run on rocks like that before. I just remember in the space of 10, the 10 kilometer downhill, I fell 15 times. I was just full up, full up. And I think I learned in that race that as long as you fall forwards, you're falling towards the finish line, so you're making progress. <laughs> and if you bounce back up and keep moving, then the pain goes away usually pretty quick because the adrenaline just gets you going again. And I, I laugh at myself a lot. Like I think there's even footage of me just laughing at how ridiculous I looked and felt. And I know I'm not technically proficient on a good chunk of the technical terrain, but I find a way. And I think that's how I approach a lot of things in life is if I'm moving forward, it doesn't matter if it's on my hands and knees or if I'm running or if I'm face planting, I'm moving forward, so I'm happy. Yeah, I think more people need to hear that because I know a lot of people that have been through a lot of horrible things worse than me in so many ways and they feel bad for not being fully recovered when they see other people out there and doing incredible things in the aftermath. But I think the thing that I've learned is that everyone is still struggling. Everyone in, in everyday life, no matter what they've been through, is still struggling. And so, yeah, I don't want to give off the air that <laughs> I'm all of a sudden better. I'm not, but I'm on my way to better. And that, that, that's, that's all we can ever be. Yo 
During the downhill, I had really bad crash. I was thinking about dropping, but a few seconds later, I saw I could run. Jonathan Albon managed a gap between me and some guys like Frederick Tranchard and Manuel Merilas, they were catching me. So I tried to keep the gap until the finish line. And two kilometers before the finish line, I saw Manuel Merilas. He was 10 seconds before me. We were both pushing very, very hard. Detrás tenía a Bart, que planteó una batalla interesante. Yo creo que este año ha sido la batalla más mantenida en kilómetros, porque fueron unos 15 kilómetros en los que lo veía o justo delante o justo detrás, pero es cosa de segundos. Y eso es lo que más me gusta. Running, I feel like it connects connects me to nature. It connects me to the world in a much deeper way than anything else I've ever done in life. And it forces you to suck up your ego at times and learn that control, learn more about yourself and how you can control the controllables. You can, but when you're up there against the elements, there's so much you can't control. And I think that is so transferable to everything else in life, where no matter what circumstances you're in, you've got to work with everything around you and not against it, and learn for yourself what you can, what you can't do, and be okay with that. And I think trail running is both humbling and empowering at the same time. And so it really helps me stay both grounded, but as big of a dreamer as ever. It's really hard for someone at home to understand just how hard it is to run on a route like Strander. Not only do you need to be fast and strong, but you need to be so technically gifted. If most people went up there, they'd have to walk down and would still fall over. But the difference between that and running a road is, is massive. Ninka last year proved that she was a good trail runner, almost the best in the world, but she still had a huge talent at road running. And this year, she's trying to do both. Not only has she done well at Zagama, but at Rotterdam, she ran 2.22, breaking the Dutch record in her second ever marathon. So now, not only do the world watch her for trail running, but the world's media are starting to know her name as a road runner as well. Trail runners professionales, chicos, en maratón que han probado, suelen andar entre 2.18 o 2.20. A los profesionales chicos claramente están en 2.10, 2 horas los africanos. Pero un trail running profesional suele estar casi ahí. Y lo de Nien, que es una pasada. Es una persona con una capacidad natural, increíble, innata. This year I have two big goals, uh, the Rotterdam Marathon and the European Championships on the Road Marathon. No one has ever been able to compete at such a high level in the same year on the road and on the trail. Because like to put that into perspective, she ran a two hour 22 marathon, which is the ninth uh, time ever by a European runner. And uh, in the same year, she set course record in the Gama, which is a huge deal. No pensaba que iba a venir a Gama ni al trail running pero parece ser que le encanta el entorno también, el ambiente, y que ha decidido venir. Ninka wants it all. She wants to be the queen of trail and the queen of road. And who wouldn't? But running races like Zagama is incredibly risky. It's super easy to fall, to twist an ankle, and to do it so close to the European Championships is a major risk, and one which could have consequences. 
think there is definitely a risk racing Zegama before the European Championships. I think there is also a risk if you do marathon training all year round. Yeah, so in the end I know there's a risk doing these kind of trail races, but it's worth the risk. The fourth race in the series is Sierras an hour. Anyone can win here, whether you're a road runner or a trail runner. I think if you combine, you know, it's way better. He says no. It's either you go home or you train. So he doesn't care. We will beat Europeans. Yeah. Because we believe in ourselves oh. and we trust in ourselves. Yeah. Two days after Sierra's an hour, with the European Athletics Championships in Munich. That shows how deep she's able to push. I really want to at least get a medal.